Okay, there's two types of inequalities and you need to be able to distinguish between the two. Okay, there's the greater than or greater than or equal to and then there's the less than or less than or equal to. Okay, depending on which of these symbols that you are using okay, you're uh, kind of solving or setting up the absolute value inequalities differently. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, the ones in this form. So the absolute value of AX plus B is less than C. And that could be a less than or equal to. It, in both of those it's solved the same way or the same idea. And so when you're dealing with a less than, and these wind up being bounded intervals. And so the less thans are bounded. Okay, they're going to be kind of sandwiched in between two things. Okay, so basically what this is saying is that the, the distance between these two values is less than C. So would that make sense that it would be, uh, if you look at this kind of graphical form, that it's everything that's less than K. So it could be all the way up to K or less than K or less than K. Anything that's less than this distance K is included in the set. Anything that's less than this distance k is included in the set. So it's sandwiched in between those two values. Okay, so that's what the less than indicates. And if you have an absolute value inequality involving a less than, okay, you're going to solve it by uh, doing the following. Actually, I'll use just the generic form here. You're going to uh, rewrite this as one inequality and it's just going to be that bounded inequality. You're going to compare it to C and then the opposite of C and then you're just going to solve this bounded inequality. Okay. So let's take a look at what that would involve. All right, so if you're working through this, you treat it very similar to the equation. You need to isolate your absolute value expression first. So the first thing I need to do is divide both sides by 2. That gives me absolute value of x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5. And then it's just a matter of sandwiching this. So we take the expression that's inside the absolute value. We sandwich it between what was given, the 5, and the opposite of what was given, the negative 5. And then we just solve for our x. So as we work through to solve for our x here, we add 3 to all parts. Again, whatever we do to the middle part to isolate the x, you have to do that to the outer parts. And so we're left with just the x in the middle. And when we subtract, or uh, when we add 3 to negative 5, we net a negative 2. 3 plus a 5 nets 8. And so we wind up with this bounded interval. And so our answer, if we were to write it in inequality form, notation looks like this. And if we wrote it in the, um, uh, the notation of the interval notation, our lower limit is negative 2. Our upper limit is 8. Are there going to be brackets or parentheses at the negative 2? It has an equal to, so it's a bracket. And at the 8, also bracket. And so this would be the interval notation for that. Okay, so the less thans are bounded. Okay, they're kind of sandwiched in between. Okay, the greater thans, on the other hand, They are the unbounded. And again, if we're looking at the greater than, so if we had an expression where it's greater than, what we're looking to see is that it's all the things that are uh, that have a difference that's more than k. So the point where it starts to be a difference from b that's more than k would be out here on the outside. And so that what represents the greater than. And so when you're looking for these greater than expressions, so if you have absolute value of AX plus B is greater than or equal to C, 
What's going to happen on this one is you're going to split your expression. Very, very similar to what we did with the equations. In each case, we're going to start with the expression that's inside the absolute value. On one side, it's going to be greater than or equal to the given value C. On the other side, we're going to compare it to the opposite of C. Well, when you compare or when you change the sign in an inequality, what do you do with the symbol? You have to flip the symbol. So when we split this on the right side, we keep it a greater than. On the left side, we turn it into a less than. It becomes this split inequality, this um, compound or inequality. And then you'd solve each of these separately. Okay. So an example of this would be the following. Okay, so if we wanted to uh, solve for this inequality here, And the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than 5. And once you isolate your uh, absolute value expression, you're then going to split it. Okay. On each side, you're going to start with the expression that's in the absolute values, x minus 1. To the right, we're just going to copy down exactly what we have, greater than 5. To the left, we're going to compare it to the opposite of that, negative 5. And so in order to move from... Uh, the positive to the negative, we do have to change the symbol. And then we're going to solve each of these individually. So as we work through this, add 1 to both sides, we get x is less than negative 4. And here, add 1 to both sides, we get x is greater than 6. And so here are your, um, your two inequality forms for this. If we were writing these in interval notation, to the left, we have all the values that are less than negative 4. So they extend from negative infinity all the way to negative 4. It's never going to include infinities. Will it include the negative 4 in this case? There's no equal to, so just a parenthesis. Our second interval in this split is x is greater than 6. So we're going to start with a lower limit of 6, an upper limit of positive infinity. Again, you can never reach infinity. The 6 has no equal to, so it's a parenthesis. And then, since we have multiple sets of intervals, we're going to use the u as a union of sets symbol. Why would I? I? Well, here you actually did flip it. It was just embedded in the sandwich. Because if you look at this, um, if you were comparing this to a negative 5, so if, if you were to split this or think of it being split, you get x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 5, right? And if you read this, x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 5. It's, it's embedded in the, the process. All right, so um, the, uh, the way to remember these, again, you guys can use your notes, so you shouldn't forget since you have access to it. But if you ever had to remember these, the kind of the, the way to remember this is great or then. This splits, when you split like this, it's kind of like taking the oars of a boat and they get split up here. Same with the way that the graph looks. And so if you think of the great or then, uh, that's the one that's going to have the graph that splits out like the paddles or oars of a boat. 